When the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive hit the market a couple of years ago, the gaming world was stoked at the possibility of everyone being able to strap on a headset and be instantly immersed in a realistic virtual world that responded to the player's every move seamlessly. So hyped was the potential of VR that Facebook famously spent $2 billion to acquire Oculus VR in 2014. But here we are a few years later, and the VR scene is as stagnant as swamp water with headset manufacturers slashing their prices in a vain attempt to boost their sales. But why? I mean, the graphics have certainly come a long way since the Virtual Boy flopped. Well, although many folks who have tried one of these newfangled VR headsets have come away impressed with the experience, VR has fallen short in areas other than what you see and hear once you put on the headset. For one, the high frame rates needed for a smooth VR experience that won't break your immersion or make you sick demands fairly high-end computer hardware, which, when combined with an expensive VR headset, is out of reach for many consumers. Plus, even if you have the money for a VR setup, they are not immune to a criticism that is common in many wearables. People just don't particularly want to wear a bunch of gadgets. You can learn more about that up here, but many consumers were reportedly turned off by the weight and bulk of VR headsets, as well as the tentacle-like cables connecting them to their PC, or PlayStation as it were. And on the subject of bulk, the sheer amount of space needed to get the full room-scale VR experience is a straight-up non-starter for folks who live in smaller spaces, especially if they already have a large gaming tower and battle station that's taking up a bunch of room. Then there's the lack of solid VR-focused games out there. Developer reception to VR platforms has been a little lackluster due to tepid sales of the headsets themselves, creating a chicken and egg problem where it's hard for the entire ecosystem to gain momentum. You can only sell so many units based on Robo Recall, and you can only play so much Robo Recall before you're like, is there something else? And this is a problem that is exacerbated by the fact that VR development is more difficult and expensive than regular game development due to the technological challenges involved. For one thing, the game engines that are needed to develop and refine these VR titles are still themselves being developed since the tech is relatively new. And there aren't that many developers with, you know, deep resumes about the, all their experience working on VR over the last 10 or 20 years because, like, it's new. Aha! Uh -huh. So, are we saying then that we should just give up? Any hope that VR will ever be relevant? Well, no at least not in the long term. The technology does have potential, especially when you consider that mainstream VR headsets have only been around a few years and the wireless adapters for them are starting to appear on the market. Additionally, VR could simply prove to be more popular for applications other than gaming than we expected, such as education, healthcare, engineering, or, well, seedier uses. But, it's also pretty clear that with the obstacles we have, it may be quite a few years before VR becomes a fixture in our homes, especially as augmented reality experiences, and this includes everything from Snapchat filters to Pokemon Go, have commanded far more attention in the immersive entertainment space, with developers seeing it as a much more lucrative cash cow than VR gaming. But don't worry, if spending half your paycheck on a VR setup is unrealistic for you, there's good news. I hear that sitting in a real cubicle for eight hours a day is actually a pretty close approximation of Job Simulator in VR anyway. Speaking of cubicles, why look at your cubicle walls when you can look at your screen and make a beautiful website on Squarespace? Squarespace's award-winning templates make creating a powerful online identity even easier than ever before. Each template is a starting point for a wide range of projects, and with their 24-7 customer support and their live webinars and help guides, anyone can do it. And they've also got tons of great features. You can transfer your third-party domains to Squarespace, so you don't have to work with multiple vendors to maintain your online presence. You can sell things online with Squarespace. Squarespace allows you to easily manage your products, orders and inventory, and you can try it out for free. Just go to squarespace.com forward slash techwiki, get a free trial, and then make sure that you use code techwiki to get 10% off your first purchase. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other videos. Don't forget to leave a comment if you have a suggestion for a future fast as possible. You know, I was always wondering if, just like put it down there. And make sure that you subscribe. 
In fact, if you're sitting in a public place right now, okay, like Starbucks, it's not good enough for you to subscribe. Go make someone else subscribe. Walk over there, just be like, you know what? I, sorry, we've never met, but um, there's this great YouTube channel, Tech Wiki. You, you need to subscribe. And if they're like, uh, excuse me, you just, you just, you take that computer and you subscribe it. <laughs> don't actually do that, please. I don't wanna get in trouble.